Hello and welcome to the latest Greater Birmingham Chambers of Commerce Q&A. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Stuart Jokes. Now Stuart is a man who wears many hats. Uh, he's the chief exec of Omni Cyber Security, but also involved in a, a marketing business and app development business, uh, and does a lot of work around charity, supporting a homeless charity, and indeed another group who helped uh, bring um, small charities who need support together. So Stuart, it's great to see you. Thanks for joining us, first of all. Nice to see you. And, uh, you know, as I sort of said there, you know, you've, you've got a wide um, number of different things that you're, you're involved in. And I suppose, you know, give us a little sense of how uh, coronavirus has been in, impacting your day to day. And I suppose the different businesses and organisations that you, you support, how that's changed and, and, you know, how things are looking right now. Sure. Um, well, as you say, I wear a number of hats and that means typically a number of challenges. Um, uh, most things are doing really, really well today. I have, um, I do a lot of mentoring and I have one client out of all the businesses I work with that's currently not operating. Um, I'm really hopeful they're going to get up back up and running because it's a 275 year old business with some great history, but um, they- What sector really is that in, Stuart? That's a clothing brand. Um, uh, so they manufacture in the Far East. They were actually the, the reason that um, personally I was able to take some really early steps with regards to protecting my businesses against COVID because they were struggling to uh, work their logistics the way they'd expect in January. So in January, I got a little bit of an insight that something was happening in the, in the Far East and uh, we started to adjust fairly early. But I... Um, yeah, all the other businesses doing really, really well today. Um, some of them I'm chief exec in, some of them advisor in. The cybersecurity business, um, as soon as lockdown hit, um, saw a loss of revenue. But the reality was that was due to businesses simply delaying decisions. And a lot of the work that we do is, is around compliance and deadlines that people have. So that business did come back. So March and April were tough. And we've recovered everything since then. So we were we had to save some costs. We had to work through some of the government support that was available. But generally speaking, that business is in is in good shape. We made a number of changes, but it's it's in good shape. Um, some of the other businesses, um, I work with some startups that were relying on investments and people's propensity to take a risk changed over the last few months. Absolutely, people so just we, preserving cash, yeah, and thinking. You know, those decisions, those gambles maybe you know, can wait until sunnier times. For sure. Um, and then the charity, I mean, homeless charity, that was probably the toughest thing because I think we were all told six months ago, go home and self-isolate. And if you don't have a home, that's that's really tough. So the homeless charity was, was really hit um, and was probably my biggest challenge over the last six months. But commercially, everything that took a hit in the spring seems to have recovered really well and is doing is doing okay today and and i was going to ask you know obviously um we're, we're talking about the start of october and um you know, the past week 10 days we've seen a number of new um uh, restrictions and, and and comments from from the prime minister and, and the chancellor and there's been that little sense of you know hang on you no know, the the r rate is 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 getting ahead of itself and um the, the pm nearly two weeks ago sort of said back to that message of if you can work from home do work from home and you know just sensed while maybe you know certainly in the early part of september real momentum towards uh, a recovery people you know so desperate for this aren't they to to come through it and and you know the, the last week or so just a, a little bit of a pause and a check and that realization that you know we're still in the middle of this there's still going to be an awful lot of precautions and you know as restrictions are are imposed and i suppose in the, the sort of the, the midlands right now we're, we're not as bad as it could be or as we're seeing um additional restrictions in the northwest and the the northeast but um has have you seen a little halt in that that recovery or is it very much actually certainly say we take omni um has it been continuing at pace even in the last couple of weeks um we have seen a i think a bit of a breather over the last couple of weeks yeah. but What's worth saying is that I took the view, uh, the two things that are relevant worth sharing. One is I took the view that the time period we needed to plan for 
was the time period the government was communicating its support for because I don't have the resource the government has so they're gonna have a better view on the impact here so we we looked at the furlough scheme as the most um, overt um, indication of government support and that was running to October so intuitively it felt to me that when they announced the furlough scheme was going to run till October which I think they probably did in July yeah we were not anticipating that we were going to see any sort of recovery before October right and the second thing to point out is that when the government announced in July so well before October that bars and restaurants were going to open to me it was an economic decision not a medical medically driven decision yep. Yeah. So we anticipated, or I anticipated then, that the bars and restaurants were being open to allow the public to have a season, to have a summer, to go out and enjoy themselves. But we would then see a further spike okay. in, or an increase in the R rate. and Which is a very natural, though the second wave is, you know, there's lots of historical data, isn't there, around that in, in pandemics. It's not a surprise, really, when you go back and look. Uh, at any comparable situations absolutely so we were anticipating that the bars and restaurants would or there'd be some sort of restriction around now and it seems to be the case um and we are anticipating that the r rate will then as a result come down and we'll be allowed out again for christmas to play and see family then and maybe you know we'll see as restricted in in the spring but the reason i'm, I'm telling you all of that is that we we built for a completely remote business to see us through at least to October. And in building it for October, we ended up future-proofing that capability anyway. So we were expecting this. Um, and what that means in Omni with regards to running a remote business is not just sending people home, but we can now run an engagement anywhere in the world without being on site. And we built physical technology that allows us to do that. And we built that in the spring of this year. But what I will say is that when the restrictions happened and we were told to go home and work from home in March, the world felt like it stopped momentarily. Mm. And this time it doesn't feel like that. It feels like there is a will of the people that's wanting things to continue. So there was a breather last week and we had a change in tone in conversations with a few people, a few clients but it doesn't feel like it stops the way it did before. So I'm feeling particularly buoyant. We're in a better place to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, we kind of anticipated it and we, um, maybe we were a little bit more pessimistic than we needed to be. And it feels, feels like there's still a lot of momentum going on. People realize now what working from home means and um, how running a business from home is possible which is very different from just working from home and I think people right now are feeling fairly buoyant about still seeing some progression even though maybe we can't stay in the pub quite as late or we're being told not I to think you, I think you're right that that, that momentum um, does continue it may it may you know slightly just ease back or slow down but like you say this is a very very different set of circumstances to late March and April and and you know we're very resilient and, and, and sort of able to adapt as a as a, a species, I suppose, aren't we? And people do um, are making those adjustments. Businesses are, and, and you know, an awful lot more is progressing. So, just you know, again, just focusing in on, on Omni and, and the world of, sort of cyber security. I mean, have you? I guess there must be some great opportunities in this period when you know, with the amount of remote working and I know you know from conversations we've been having and, and picking up you know, the 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 risks and threats around cyber attack are obviously even greater now but there, and therefore there's a, a greater need for for cyber security and I'd imagine also greater awareness of that amongst a potential uh, client base is that is that what you're seeing and picking up yeah absolutely and uh, our business primarily is about um keeping customers and winning new customers. Mm. Um, so from a keeping customers perspective, we equipped ourselves really well to continue to supply a service under any conditions, under any restrictions. So our, our churn, if you like, has been nothing through this year. Um, you know, our, our, the customers, the rate at which customers renew this year is, is far higher than anything the business has experienced in the past. Um, 
but what we have seen is um, a lot of new customers coming to us, not necessarily for our core product. So our core product is typically penetration testing, um, ISO, PCI, cyber essentials type, uh, type provisions. And we're seeing a lot of people come to us for social engineering engagements and training because the, the biggest change that's happened for most, most businesses over the last six months is where people are working and how they're working. So it's been, um, there's been an increase in business coming into us, but it's been specifically around those areas that relate to, relate to people. And I think if I was potentially a client of Omni Cyber at the moment, I'm looking at squeezed revenues and higher costs because I've, I'm having to pay for people's faster broadband at home and give people an extra screen and I'm still carrying the costs and overheads of my offices and I've got to make some priority calls. You know, my, my decision right now would be to spend money on showing up the, the understanding and the capability of the, the people within the business um, even more so than the technology within the business. Um, and I think that's, that's typically what we've seen. So we've done a lot of training, um, which we do remotely. Um, and uh, I think that's that's money very very well spent for a lot of our clients at the moment. And, and are you sort of seeing you know, cyber risks increasing and 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 people being hit and and suffering uh, sort of directly from that? I mean, we're sort of aware of it, but um, you know, are the specific examples out there where you know it's real sort of threat to business, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Um, a very common start to a relationship for us and a client is we get a call from somebody to say I've been hacked. Right. And um, the, I'm just going to say it how it is, but you can tick some boxes um, with a cybersecurity supplier, but not necessarily get the job done properly. Mm -hmm. So people feel that they've got protection and sooner or later they find out they haven't. And I couldn't give you an exact number, but it's kind of of the magnitude. Maybe we get a call like that once a week from somebody to say, historically, I've had a problem. Can you help me through that? And then can we put a, a new standard in place for the business? Um, and that's at least doubled. Um, different types of uh, issues that people, um, people are experiencing. Um, more so coming from phishing attempts where members of staff have clicked on something that they shouldn't have and uh, network infrastructure is slightly different when people yeah. are so, uh, working so disparately. But yeah, we've seen, we've seen a lot of new business uh, come from customers because customers are seeing you know, a greater range and a greater um, quantity of threats. Um, it's, you know, it's not a particularly nice industry. Um, you know, there's some pretty bad people out there. Yeah, and that's where you need the right sort of partnerships and the um, and where you can make sure, as you say, you know, that it's really dispersed through your your team and your staff because you're only as good as your your weakest link, aren't you? And uh, you need to make sure that they're as uh, as gend up as as possible, I guess. Um, and Stuart, I mean, tell us a little bit then about the, the marketing business that you're involved in and 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 how that has been faring through the the pandemic because obviously you know we speak to lots of businesses and the general sense economic downturn marketing spend might be something that the businesses would traditionally row back on um well i remember you know, someone once saying to me you can always cut half of your marketing budget you just need to know which half to cut which uh i thought was uh you know has, has long lived with me and I'm, I'm of the the view that actually these are those times that you invest in marketing and you need to to push forward but yeah what, what's been the the reality from uh, from that um it, well, it's worth gi giving you some sort of 30 seconds on my broader background so i'm a change guy um i often get labeled as a turnaround guy but i can take an idea and turn it into a business or i can take a good business and turn it into an excellent business or a broken one and fix it um and i've uh, during this period i haven't been able to work with any more businesses i'm comfortably at capacity at the moment and i'm very happy with what i'm doing and enjoying the good work life balance as well but i take the phone calls and within a very brief period of time understanding some of the challenges people are facing there are two ways to go you can cut costs and you could or you can increase revenue 
Mm. And the point you make about you can always cut half your marketing budget, you just don't know which half, is historically true, but is currently inaccurate because when most marketing is most marketing and acquisition marketing budgets are spent online it's relatively easy to know what's working and what isn't so um marketing budgets are spent more efficiently than ever nowadays um so when those calls come through um it's typically not me they need it's somebody to help develop um some efficient growth in their revenue yeah. And as a result, the, the marketing businesses, you know, is having a particularly bumper time at the moment. Um, so the marketing business, I mentor the owners and support them. And um, I would hope that this year will be a, will be a record period for them. They work, um, they provide the marketing um, support for Omni and are a key reason for our success this year yeah um, but they also work across um uh, i have uh, an interest in a mortgage broker and uh, they provide all of the growth in that industry which has its own challenges at the moment yeah um they work across um a data privacy business and a fintech um that i work for um and countless other companies that i had a phone call from and introduced them to and they continue to do a great job for yeah and so, I mean, just to sort of um, to wrap up the, 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 the chat, I mean, you know, going through this, I don't know, you know, whereabouts on the, the journey we are. I think it's a very good point that, that you made earlier around, you know, the government um, set out that, that, that period through to the end of October and, and you know, um, our crystal ball doesn't sort of say, oh, on this date, the, the pandemic will be over. But, you know, let's all um, I'll hope that as we get into 2021, um, a sense of that and uh, will be be sooner than, than than later but i guess what are the what's the biggest lesson or learn that you've had to date through all of this and um and it's great to hear the position that omni and the other um activities you're involved in are, are, are absolutely thriving right now and sort of what's your your sense for for the next six months as well and and um and where are you on the the optimism scale um, so a few questions that I feel particularly buoyant and optimistic about Good. things because um, I think it's a lesson. I, I would say that the, we can adapt. If you've got a decent product um, that customers need, um, then you can adjust your model and the business will still be viable. So we had a training business that, that launched in March, classroom training. You can imagine that was challenging. Yeah. But that training business created all the assets and the capability and put the resource in place that ultimately this year has been providing training to clients who've needed to give their staff support that they didn't have before. Um, we have built remote engagement capability for Omni Cybersecurity to deliver anywhere in the world without being on site because we needed to. But that now means that going forward, our, the cost of working with us excludes expenses and when we deal with a hotel chain in 40 countries around the world the expenses become a big part of the engagement and yeah. they're not in the costs anymore so um it was hard march was tough it was really really tough i mean on a personal level i stopped giving my kids pocket money right i said look this is this is something i've never seen before i don't know how tough it's going to be but we're, we're all going to have to pull our yeah. socks up here and um and now I feel that we've we've been forced into making some really really good decisions uh, to think really smartly, and you know we're in we're in a really great place. So I feel very optimistic. Yeah. My biggest lesson has been don't panic. Just take a look at the facts. If your business is good, if it, you know it's a viable product that customers want, then there'll be an answer. And largely speaking, we've we found those answers and. The point about the government support from a furlough perspective running until October gave me a little bit of direction. Of course, now is the job support scheme, I think it's called, which yes. runs for the next six months, which gives me further indications that whilst things are improving because the support is less, the government is still anticipating a very tough period for another six months. Yes. And as a result, we'll plan accordingly. I think that's a, that's a great... Um... Way of looking at it, isn't it? You know, it's number one, don't panic and sort of try to 
to filter out. There's a lot of, of noise. You're all being bombarded with messaging and, and are probably, you know, by nature, people working from home more and, and screen time, you're sort of absorbing more. But it's to filter it out and to try to look at the facts, look at what is in front of us. And you know, from your own business, I suppose you go back and, as you say, build on the strengths improve on the weaknesses and um you know where that that you know, good businesses will always find a way through won't they and um i know that right now you know sectorally there's some uh, who are more challenged than, than others but um it's great that that you know you've been able to sort of um navigate to this day and i think it's it's uplifting to see that optimism so um Stuart, thank you so much for for joining us and for for sharing some of those views and insights there. And uh, what we'll make sure is that anyone uh, who's watching, they'll have all the links to, to Omni Cyber Security in the, uh, just below the video. So Stuart, thank you very much. Cheers, Paul.